he's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? And we're back. We're back. Hey, we got such a hell's a poppin' episode of mm. mortgage madness today. There, we're just we're not even gonna have any small talk, okay? Mm. Except for all you sons of bitches who want to know what the dates are like. I mean, this is the first. This is February started. Like, okay, mm -hmm. that's all first the dates you're February. getting. That's it. That's all Happy the dates Tuesday. you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> there is a rumor though that mm. there's a Tiff Macklin thing coming up. Like, oh. There's a rumor that there might be a Papa Diff Macklin. Mm -hmm. We shall see. We'll see. Stay locked on our TikTok and Instagram to ooh, find out. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a lot. But anyway, no, we got, <laughs> we got, uh, yeah, Muppet Tiff. I mean, wow. We'll have a few um, special guests, a couple. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> it's, 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 uh, you know, he starts something, then just gets white right out of hand. Yeah. Anyway, let's dive into this mortgage, private mortgage insanity. Mm. Okay, I got, I got. I, this is the first time I've actually had to read stuff here. He brought on the, the pod. receipts. I brought all this stuff because you know, here's what you got to realize: mm -hmm. if if you're gonna be talking about things that actually happen to people and real people, you need the facts. You need coverage <laughs> you need to be under you need to be covered okay yeah. like uh you need to know that uh, the stuff is court records mm -hmm. okay because here's public. the thing public records yeah mm -hmm. you can't get sued just quoting public records there you go okay? i mean you know this is this is it all right so first <laughs> of all what's this private mortgage stuff okay like we've talked a lot of t talk about private mortgages before on the show we've done a lot of coverage on private mortgages so to, to sum it up again People want to put a mortgage on a property, or mostly starts with a borrower. A borrower wants money on a property. They want a mortgage on a property. Uh, anybody can do a mortgage on a property. Humans can do it. You you, by the way, think... you, you only have to be over the age of sixteen, I think. Really? Right? Uh, it's, it's it's yeah, That's it's weird. weird. It is kind of weird, but uh, there's it's you know we got to realize that <laughs> that all laws to do with property are old. Mm, right 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 you know the right. laws to do with property go back uh, 100 200 years yeah right? by the age of 16 you were like mother of three <laughs> yeah you had a mother of three or, or you know you'd already gone to war or something yeah. you know something you were along, something those, along lines. those lines so life I mean, expectancy yeah. was like 30 years yeah so. exactly so <laughs> so yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense <laughs> so it just sort of hung on hung on for a while but anyway yeah so it, it's but it's a very it's all very old law but anybody could do a mortgage on a property mm -hmm. you go to a lawyer give the lawyer the money mm -hmm. the lawyer registers your name in a mortgage on the title of the house and gives the money that the person's supposed to get to the person who who owned the house mm -hmm. okay and now you're kind of you're basically your co-owners you're both on title at that point yeah. okay so very I thought, you know the thing people should understand about it is that if it's done mm -hmm. correctly it is fairly safe but it, it you have to understand every little detail of it mm -hmm. you have to understand what the loan to value you're going to house the house is worth a million mm -hmm. and you're only lending four hundred thousand as a first mortgage you're probably good if the house is worth a million and there's already a mortgage for eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. and then you're lending two hundred thousand you might be fuck it mm -hmm. okay like mm -hmm. that ain't good. you're not 100 percent of the value of the house yeah so you gotta that's the whole concept of the security on the home right it's secured collateral security that's what we call it. So the thing is that it can get really offside, mm -hmm. okay? In almost always, when it gets offside, don't get me wrong, the market has an effect. Like mm -hmm. if you put a mortgage, a private mortgage on a house mm -hmm. in 2021, that house appraised for big, big money, the market's come down, say 25%. So if you had a 75% loan to value mortgage on a house in 2021, mm -hmm. You might be at 100% now because that's the value of the house gone right. down, right? Yeah. But there's a million other things. And unfortunately, unfortunately, some things are pure fraud. So 
some things are pure fraud mm-hmm. and some things are questionable or puzzling or mm-hmm. so we're gonna talk about two cases today so let's talk about the case of uh Stephen Hembecker of Kitchener Waterloo. Mm-hmm. Stephen Hembecker is a former mortgage broker. I checked online, and he is no longer registered as a mortgage broker with Fisra. He's he's out. Yeah, he's Oops. out. Oopsie. Um, <laughs> so I'm just reading from the um, uh, Kitchener Waterloo Record newspaper there, uh, and this is from court documents and bankruptcy documents. Okay, this is this all just filed in court. Mm-hmm. So. Horse racing enthusiast, Stephen Hembecker. Not to be confused, but apparently there's another Stephen Hembecker who's like in the music business. Okay. This is definitely not him. Not him. Okay, okay. not him at all. Okay. So horse racing enthusiast, Stephen Becker. Also, Mr. Becker, he's not as old as me, but he's not young either. Mm -hmm. And he wears his hair in a ponytail, so... Horse enthusiast like so. Well, no, but any man over 40 <laughs> wearing a ponytail. It's, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> it's an open fucking question in my opinion, okay? That's just the way I think, all right? He, okay, so... He just likes the tails. <laughs> Stephen M. Becker of Waterloo owes more than $115 million to creditors. Yeah, he owns $100, $115 million, including family and friends. Wait till I get to this list, okay? Uh, with at least a dozen civil suits brought by investors who are owed about $80 million of total debt. Yeah, like this is... Holy shit. This is going to go to hell in a handbasket here. All right, so let's let's figure out what happens. So it looks like Mr. Hembecker, or let's call our buddy, let's call him Ponytail Steve for now, okay? <laughs> Ponytail Steve um, went out and he was mainly getting mortgage money because mm-hmm. the intention of these people were they were putting it into mortgages, right? Mm-hmm. So it's very official, very legal, very straightforward. Here's money, put it a mortgage on a house, make sure it gets registered on title. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of it's through like maybe through a mortgage investment corp or a little corporation he was running. Mm-hmm. I don't know all those details. But the bottom line is there's like a big investor. There's one big investor, Bradley J. Grant and Bradley J. Grant Investments. Or significant interest fees on money invested through Hambecker's company, Nesteg. What the hell? Nesteg? But I guess it's meant to sound like Nest Egg, okay? But it's Nestig. Nestig, Nestig, not Nestig, okay? Uh, Okay. A Waterloo mortgage (laughs) business, a Waterloo mortgage business run by Ponytail Steve and co owned by his (laughs) wife, okay? Superior court documents from a Brampton court in December show Hembecker admitted he used Grant's money not for the mortgage investments, Uh-oh. but for personal and unconnected uses. <laughs> no so, yeah, fucking yeah. way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> okay. Uh, Justice Leonard Rochetti said, is establishes an overwhelming case of fraud. That's not me saying it. That's Justice Leonard Rochetti. Okay. Holy now, uh, Steve. Ponytail Steve and his wife Joanna acquired substantial assets, including a 2020 Lamborghini oh. sports car. Oh, whoa! Paid in cash, I assume. <laughs> I am assuming. Uh, and uh, hor- race horses. Oh, of course. 19 yearlings for 2.3 million on his horse farm in Poose Lynch, Ontario. <laughs> Where? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So many questions. <laughs> many questions. <laughs> Lawyers for Grant say the principal interest and fees owned him are valued at $62 million. Uh, you got to convert those ponies into money pretty fast, Holy I guess. Shit. Holy shit. Yeah, this is, this is pretty Whoa. wild, okay? Now, Mr. Hambecker, Ponytail Steve, he blamed his bankruptcy on poor money management particularly other people's money management. Uh, Okay, so uh, like, um, oh, and poor decision-making. Oh, Oh, really? really. You you don't think. (laughs) (laughs) Also, bad timing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I I was going to put it back, but I just got caught too soon. Oh, Oh my God, these people are insane. No, we're laughing, but like, when someone's get, like real life like well, this, yeah, is this is so bizarre life. this is real life this man <laughs> this man who trusted ponytail steve mm-hmm. um he lost six looks like he's gone out for like over 60 million dollars oh my it's, goodness if i was that guy i sure as shit wouldn't be laughing that's Ooh. for sure but, wow that's that's awful that is so bizarre like okay so currently hembecker this is really interesting currently mm-hmm. hembecker is making money as a referral specialist because he's no longer a mortgage licensed mortgage broker or agent in Ontario. He's mm-hmm. got no license anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who require loans for debts or mortgage solutions come to him and he refers them to a lender or mortgage broker for a fee. Now, hold on a fucking second here, okay? Like, this is his new work now. 
is like, isn't that just work meant for mortgage brokers yeah. who have a license? <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, if, if you want to know where to get a mortgage, I'm going to need here. Uh, oh, uh, he, he is his arranging fees, like, because he's not doing, mm -hmm. he's not arranging mortgages. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's arranging meetings. Okay? Right. He, he charges meeting arranging fees, which range from $1,000 to 21500 what fuckery is this? Okay, Who like the fuck are they people meeting the queen? Whoa, like, holy <laughs> shit! I mean, no, they can't meet the queen anymore. The oh, king. they can. They can meet the new queen, uh, Camilla. Camilla, right. there's a new queen. Right, right. You, you realize years ago they called her the Rottweiler, right? Like, really? Yeah, oh yeah, that was her official name, the Rottweiler. Okay. All right. Oh so God. let's get back to Ponytail <laughs> Steve. Uh, I think what he's up to. I, I think the regulators should invent what he's up to in, investigate what he's doing today about this referral service he's offering. Yeah. All right, but uh, <laughs> that was pretty fucking wild. All right. So here is. Uh, by the way, he was traveling uh, all the last five years prior to his bankruptcy. He's traveling all over the place, Bahamas. He's got a property in Florida, naturally. Uh, and also to casinos in the United States, all over the place. Annual travel costs, not only just the travel costs. I don't know what he lost to casinos. They were running about 10 grand a year. Not that bad. But here's the thing that got to me. This is what got to me. Despite initially testifying that he did not owe any money to family or friends... Ponytail Steve eventually went on to detail debts owed to family and friends. Yeah, debts <laughs> owed to family and friends. Oh, and this is quite a, quite a list, okay? $390,000 to a fishing buddy. A fishing buddy? Yeah, fishing buddy. Okay, so okay. Sounds, sounds like he put the hook into the fishing buddy. <laughs> All right. $805,000 owed to a brother-in-law. Oh, my uh, That God. guy probably isn't too happy. Oh, no. uh, five, his wife must come from a big family because uh, there's another 575 owed to another brother-in-law, 575000 Holy shit. Uh, but it turns out his own family was also victimized. Mm. $2.5 million owed to his cousin. His cousin, okay? Uh, $2.5 million, sweet Jiminy Crickets. Um, oh, my God. And finally... Uh, Two hundred ninety thousand he took from his mother-in-law. Oh my god! But how? But you know, how do we feel about in-laws? No. Stop it! Stop it! I was just kidding. <laughs> All you in-laws out there, before you start putting the comment <laughs> section, I'm just goddamn joking. Okay, like, enough, <laughs> enough of that. All right. Like I mean, yes, he should not have stolen money. Or sorry, we don't know if he stole money yet. I take that Borrowed. back. Borrowed. Take that. Take that back. <laughs> take it back. Okay. Uh, not not stolen at all. Uh, but money. Um, Money seems to be owed to those mm -hmm. people. What can I tell you? Um, at the same time as this was going on, uh, Joanna Hembecker, Ponytail Steve's wife, applied to the court in September for an increase in her allowance from the court, who seized all the assets, her allowance so she could make her $3,500 a month Porsche payments. Priorities. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Holy Lord, love a duck here. Oh, this is, this is wild. Stuff. That's insane. That's insane. That's that's Ponytail Steve. So Holy what shit. is the lesson, folks out there? What is the lesson? All right. <laughs> what have we learned? So what have we learned from this? I mean, all right. I'm going to call this the Ferrari rule. Listen carefully. The Ferrari rule. Okay. If somebody asks you to invest money in something, I don't care what it is, real mm -hmm. estate, mortgages, stocks, bonds, special things like special business, well, open up a business, whatever. Yeah. If the person asking for the money mm -hmm. drives a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, mm -hmm. a Rolls, mm -hmm. or a Bentley, don't give them the fucking money, okay? <laughs> like, do not do it. All right, don't do that. Like, if you see, you know, if you say, well, you have a lunch meeting with a ponytail guy, you know, a guy like he's in his 50s, he's got a big ponytail down his back, he got a little <laughs> diamond ring in one ear, uh, and, uh, you know, he says, yeah, we got a great deal here, you should invest. Mm -hmm. And then as you watch him leave the lunch meeting, he jumps into his Lambo, which you can't really jump into a Lambo. Like, it's so close to the fucking ground. Like, <laughs> I watched a guy, I watched an old fat guy like me try to get out of a Lambo. Oh, no. He had to roll onto the pavement, okay? Like, it just did not work out for him at all. But here's the Ferrari oh rule. This is the fucking Ferrari rule, okay? <laughs> do not, do not lend money to people with ponytails driving with a Lambo. Ponytail. 
<laughs> with a ponytail driving a Lambo. Okay. That's the Ferrari. <laughs> we call that the Ferrari rule. If the person looking for money is driving a Ferrari, don't do it. No. It's that simple. Now we'll go on to some possibly greater wildness. Okay. It gets, oh, it gets worse. Well, we got a whole new thing. We're, okay. we're finished with Ponytail Steve over here. Put and we're going to move on to the incredible story of Happy Gilmore. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, we all know Happy Gilmore is a movie by Adam Sandler that we love. Everybody loves Happy Gilmore. Like, it's got a Canadian. It was filmed in Canada. Yeah. It was filmed in Canada. It was filmed around Vancouver. Yeah. And it was also um, it was a very successful movie. It had Bob Barker in it for a big fist fight between mm -hmm. Adam Sandler, Bob Barker. It was great. And uh, it was about a hockey player who became mm -hmm. a golf star. Okay, mm -hmm. so he would just hit. He would hit the hawk. He would hit the golf ball like a slap shot. Like it was, it was fucking ridiculous. But, <laughs> but still, that these. This is the Happy Gilmore Inc. So what this is is a group of high-profile real estate advisors. Mm. Okay, and there there may be some shenanigans here, but I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Like it's an open question, but I am reading from court documents. Mm -hmm. This court doc. This is a court document to do with CCAA. So if you got a, a bankruptcy over five million dollars of corporate mm -hmm. money, you have to apply to the court through the Canada Creditor uh, Assignment. Um, Canada, yeah. Or, sorry, Canada Creditor Arrangement Account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or adjudication. Anyway. It's CCAA. It's what mm -hmm. happens if your company can't pay its bills. It happened like right. with Bad Boy. Remember how Bad mm -hmm. Boy Furniture went broke? Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, at first it went through CCAA, and then they just put it in the bankruptcy. It's done. Yeah. So the first stage, though, is you have to go through CCAA. So I'm now reading from court documents. So these are people. Uh, I, I don't have to name the people, but uh, let's just say they are. I might name a couple of them, but they are uh, well-known real estate hot shots. Mm. Like uh, they will go. They put on seminars. They put on um like training they train you how to become rich in real estate mm -hmm. okay so now but now we got to realize all their companies are in this bankruptcy scenario okay so and there's lots of companies too there's happy gilmore inc uh they and they, all these companies own houses mm -hmm. they all own houses okay own they own houses that the that these companies bought so uh happy gilmore inc the pink flamingo inc like all serious names. The Mulligan Inc., okay? Horses in the Back Inc. I don't know what that means. I mean, I, I, I don't the know. The horse trend going on. Yeah, there's a horse trend in all this stuff for sure. Um, and the Joint Capital Real Estate. But Joint, like, I, no, sorry, Joint Captain. Joint Captain. Now, I don't know if that refers to people smoking joints, like people on the weed, okay? Which is on legal. That's legal. That's all legal. There's no harm with that anymore. <laughs> That's all fine. Yeah, but you do it. You stay on the weed, hit the shatter, whatever you need to do. My dad still okay. calls it grass. Okay. <laughs> grass is, that's old school. Yeah. That is really old He's school. He's pretty OG. Okay. Yeah, that's really old school. But if, you know, hit people on the weed, uh, people uh, smoking joints, people uh, on, on the, the shatter. Marijuana's. All that, all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> On the edibles, like, yeah. Um, but this was all good now. Okay, yeah. all good. Uh, anyway, the name of this guy. So these are all a group of companies that had to file for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Now, together, all in, these companies own 405 residential properties scattered around Ontario. 405? 405. All these different companies have the same group of people who own them. And the, who are the shareholders and directors. What okay? the hell? How, wait, wait, hold. How long would it take to get 405 properties? Unless, like, it would have to take at least a couple of years, right? I mean, you just can't shit. acquire them fast enough. Yeah. But the other weird part of it is where they were getting these properties. like Because these properties are like all, all over the place, okay? So we got these properties. They're in small... T there's a big, big one in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. There's a big property in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of them are in very, very small towns. Like they're in... Uh, Timmins mm -hmm. and Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie. 
I don't know if you've ever been to Sault Ste. Marie. No, but but I've heard of it. It is not a big town, Sault Ste. Marie, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're in all these small towns and Hamilton, because apparently these guys were sort of based out of Hamilton, Burlington. Mm -hmm. And all these small towns with different groupings of houses. They're all all individual houses and sort of triplexes and fourplexes. Mm -hmm. And the the one in Hamilton is an apartment building, which nobody's lived in for for a long time. This One of these guys apparently who owns these places uh, turned off the water. For his, uh, yeah, turned off the water for the uh, the people in the apartments. That's not a very nice thing. But, but anyway, uh, to drive them out so we could renovate the place. Yeah, that was the whole <gasps> thing. So the whole concept here is. Oh, my God. The whole concept here is that these people were going to buy these homes, triplexes, duplexes, in these far off places, mm-hmm. all right, all over all over Ontario. Mm-hmm. And there's a, like, uh, there's a, like a thousand tenants. By the way, that's not even like, and that's with like half of the places you can't live in because yeah. they're all wrecked. They were all yeah. the, the, meant to be renovated, right? Right. So there's all kinds of different, they all have different values. Like Pink Flamingo mm-hmm. owns like, a, which is also a subsidiary of Happy Island. Mm-hmm. I mean, between the joints, these guys are pretty happy, I guess. But uh, <laughs> that was a $3 million one. Uh, there was uh, back to Happy Gilmore. That was a 20, almost $21 million one. Uh, bankruptcy there Holy uh, shit. then there's it, it, so they are sort of one of these is romantic it's like called interlude <laughs> interlude company uh, interlude inc they that's 40 million almost 40 million the mulligan is less that the mulligan apparently is a defunct golf course that they bought for some reason nobody can explain uh for about 700 and then joint captain joint captain there he is uh which is also part of happy island and sail away corp okay like what the fuck's going on here? Uh, that's about <laughs> nearly $8 million, okay? so Holy shit. Uh, yeah, now, where this goes into, you know, it's perfectly fine if people want to buy rentals and uh, they go broke. I mean, because the whole concept behind it was that we will buy these places in far-flung, far-off places mm-hmm. from all over the province, and then we will rehab them, renovate them, mm-hmm. turn them into, create more suites in them, mm-hmm. and therefore we will make lots of money. Okay. Right. Uh, because then we'll rent them out and we'll make a ton of money. Okay. And there, there were a thousand tenants in, involved. Some are gone now, and some are you know. But some had no choice with no some running had no water. Choice with no running water. No so that was shit. the end of that. So, so the interesting thing to me is on the mortgage side. That's what's interesting to me. So, let me read some of this stuff. Okay. So, this is who the mortgages are from. So the mortgages are from all sourced. As I'm reading from the court documents, okay, uh, all sourced from one mortgage brokerage um, and one mortgage broker, Claire Drage of the Lions Share Group, also Claire Drage of Windrose Capital, okay, in Hamilton. So there's. Uh, and the other really wild part is that these things, all this investment, this Windrose Capital, is apparently because we read the we read the uh, the prospectus, and mm. it's a mixture. <clears throat> it's a, yeah, all of the original first mortgage loans were sourced by a Hamilton-based mortgage brokerage, the Windrose Group Inc. Windrose mm-hmm. through its principal broker Claire Drage, Ms. Drage. As such, the first mortgages have substantially similar terms. So it sounds like it was a private mortgages. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could be wrong on this. I'll just yeah. put that out there. But it, if they're all of similar terms, then that sounds to me like they're private mortgages uh, sourced through uh, a MIC. Sort mm-hmm. sort of, but not a MIC because there were also, and this is where it gets wild. By the way, there's second mortgages too. There's second mortgages. So let's face it. These guys are running around with all these little companies buying up these houses. Mm-hmm. And they've got first mortgages then they've got second mortgages there's uh second mortgage is obviously more risky than a first mortgage mm-hmm. uh eight million six hundred forty two thousand in principal outstanding and second mortgage loans through one company most sorry most through one company lift capital lift second mortgage loans okay lift capital sorry lift capital incorporated out mm-hmm. of burlington so i'm sounds bad for lift capital because yeah. i don't you know 
Second mortgage risk, and they're all in receivership. Holy okay, shit. fifty lawsuits going and 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 more. But they, when you do this, when you do this uh, CCAA, yeah. you stop all the lawsuits. Right, okay, that's the right. reason to do it. Okay, now this is fascinating. Other obligations against the property include PPSAs, which are personal property security. They're typically referred to as promissory loans, mm-hmm. promissory notes, promissory loans. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're unsecured. These are all unsecured, okay? So unsecured would scare, personally, if it was me, that would scare the bejeebers out of me. I'd be shitting okay? bricks, yep. Yeah, because I don't think... I'm, I'm going, I don't think it's going to go well at all. No. Okay. I mean, if I got, I got, I got, that's unsecured. There's no mortgage. It's unsecured. And interestingly, uh, there's 802 unsecured promissory notes involved. 802. Oh, my God. Approximately 602 of the promissory notes were issued to the Lion's Share Group, of which Ms. Drage is the chief executive officer. And the remainder were sourced through Windrows issued directly to individual lenders. So I read a little bit about Windrose's original prospectus uh, offering memorandum, and this was an an investment vehicle that was going to do both mortgages and promissory notes. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never seen that before. I'll be honest with you. I'm sure it exists somewhere, Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but I've actually never seen A a MIC, Mm -hmm. which is what we talk about most of the time in private lending, a MIC is a mortgage investment corporation. Mm -hmm. And by rule, they all have to be registered mortgages. Like whatever they invest in must be a registered mortgage Mm -hmm. just to get the correct tax treatment on the MIC as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is not that. This is promissory notes, okay? So I don't know what's happened here, but this is what I believe. I believe if all your properties... Owned by all these amazing companies, the Pink Flamingo and, and Happy Gilmore and mm-hmm. uh, the Mulligan um, yeah. Joint Captain Real okay. Estate. Um, I believe that if they're all in receivership, all 405 properties are in receivership. Oh, my God. I don't think that's good for the lenders. Oh, you know, no. I, I got a feeling that ain't good. Now, what the whole organization was kind of about, so I got a big article about uh, Hamilton... Well, it's a, a big, big unit. It's the big one was in Hamilton. It's a multifamily unit in Hamilton. It's like an apartment building mm-hmm. at 1083 Main Street in Hamilton. And it's completely empty and, and there's nobody there. So, by the way, out of all these millions of dollars worth of obligations, apparently they were only getting rents of about 173000 a year, which wouldn't come anywhere in a jillion miles of ever being able to pay for any mm-hmm. of that. So, so, But Ms. Claire Drage was actually uh, very, apparently very enthusiastic. I'm reading now from her, from her a posting that she put online, mm-hmm. Claire Drage, Principal Mortgage Worker at Windrose, <clears throat> and she stated that many of our vo- borrowers, many of our borrowers follow a savvy strategy, which involves acquiring homes below market average with the intent to renovate and build equity. Mm -hmm. These properties are typically situated in regions experiencing significant market growth. Mm. Ah, okay. By purchasing properties under market value and enhancing their appeal through renovations, our borrowers capitalize on the potential for substantial future appreciation. This approach aligns with the principle of buying low, buy low, okay, and sell high which is fundamental concept in wealth building through real estate investment. This is quoting Claire Drage. And um, I guess it didn't work out that way. No, uh, because it's a shit show. All of these properties are in, um, well, maybe there's by some miracle, all the lenders get all their money, all the investors get their money back. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm hope so anyway, mm-hmm. uh, maybe they will. I mean, it's possible, but it's, an, I'm not, I was actually not familiar with lending against the strategy of uh, of uh, renovation in experiencing significant growth because if they're receive, experiencing significant growth, why would they be priced under market, mm-hmm. these regions? Like, yeah. But anyway, the evidence is here. The evidence is very clear that yeah. uh, a recommendations were made because the, the mortgages were sourced through... Um, Mr. H Company, mm-hmm. uh, that um, all those properties are in receivership. Wow. So, uh, wow. hope it works out. Uh, but the lesson to my mind is mm-hmm. there's a lot of mortgage investment opportunities for private lending, private mortgages in Ontario, British Columbia, all over Canada. 
This is allowed all, this is available all over Canada. And what I would tell you is this, that my experience at it, and I know many of the top operators, we've even had them on the show, uh, some of the very top operators in the private mortgage space, Mm -hmm. mortgage investment corporation space, um, Nick Cipriano, Derek Serra, uh, their position is um, they want to meticulously underwrite properties individually. In many cases, their preference is only for existing residential, no speculation, no flipping, no burr. Mm -hmm. You know what burr is, right? Like buy, buy, renovate, rent, rehab, refinance. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I've never never been involved in it, but that's what it is. Uh, And uh, yeah, Um, with, and, and I know, with Nick and Derek, they basically run very successful operations. They want to only be involved with like the homeowner, mm-hmm. people who are living in the house, um, lower loan to values. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as a promissory note from those companies. It doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, they're, they're, they don't like second mortgages to be involved. They just want to have, they don't do second. So mm-hmm. I don't think they, those guys are really doing any seconds per se meticulous underwriting great care watch your appraisals and uh crossing their t's dotting their i's <sighs> yeah but anyway um uh, so these this is some interesting private mortgage yeah. stories from ontario this yeah. week that came up so yeah that's what uh, that's what happened all right we'll cut a couple of other things quickly because that that took up a lot of time because it's just that it's fucking incredible yeah okay? it's, like it's just fucked just wild yeah <laughs> um okay so we had um we had a quick thing on uh, we have rate action this week mm-hmm. three-year rates come down in the last 10 days uh we got a three-year rate uh that's even conventional high ratio by the way high ratio five-year fixed mm-hmm. hit four seven four this week wow very low uh, yeah. But very low compared with six something just a short yeah, time ago. In comparison, uh, of course. <laughs> not very low compared with 149 three yeah. years ago. But um, oh, and there we we discovered a company. I won't mention them. We discovered a company only offering fake rates online, Uh-oh. like rates who do not exist. Like they're like 20 beats lower than the lowest rate you can get. 20 basis points lower than the lowest rate you can yeah. get. Well, how do you know they're fake, Ron? Well, because I know every lender in the province <laughs> and what you can, every lender, sorry, every lender in many, several provinces, mm-hmm. we're licensed in three provinces, and these rates don't exist. Do not False exist. advertising. Well, it's called bait and switch, right? Mm-hmm. Like you offer a ridiculously low rate, and when the customer calls in, no matter what they say they are, even if they sort of, should be the most perfect fit mm-hmm. for more. Somehow there'd be something like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, um, you have to be born on a Tuesday <laughs> to get that, uh, to get the four or five so four ridiculous. rate. Uh, but since you weren't born on a Tuesday, you can get the 504 rate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So That's there's so that, crazy. that both. Uh, you know, insanity exists. Okay. Insanity yeah. exists in any business. <laughs> Unfortunately, but bait and switch is a sick, stupid practice. I'll wow. tell you that much. All right. Okay. So like, uh, like I say, that's, that was the point we hit this week. 4.74 on high ratio, CMC insured, five-year <laughs> fixed purchases only. That's under a million. There's a lot of conditions involved. Uh, three years come down. It's uh, There's a bunch of three-year bouncing around under um, insured. It's bouncing under uh, 5%. That, that's probably a better option, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like a 499 three-year high ratio of purchase in my opinion is a better better option than a five year at 474 mm-hmm. one man's opinion bunch of financing but reasons behind it i'll get to that uh another show okay um quick it's, there was a wild one this week mm-hmm. you know we talk about international students a lot mm-hmm. right we yeah. talk about a lot of international students mm-hmm. so many like i read, read a stat it was like eight years ago, it was like 140,000 of them. And then last year, it was like 840,000 of them. So Only half of them ended up at Conestoga. A bunch of them ended up at Conestoga. <laughs> or, or as my or as my, my friend David Hurley describes it, the, the uh, Hurley Business College uh, located in a strip mall in Brampton. Uh, anyway, the, uh, uh, anyhow, uh, so fascinating story. We always, we always talk about the idea that these people have to have somewhere to live mm-hmm. and there's a tremendous housing and half of them come to Ontario of course. and there's a tremendous housing shortage. Mm-hmm. So 
and we've oh, right, we've been talking about this for years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not all we don't not, we didn't have the show for years, but all us talked about it on social media, on Twitter, all the time, constantly. How crazy this is! So, and TikTok too. Don't forget TikTok, folks. Angry Mortgage <laughs> and TikTok. Ron Mortgage Guy on TikTok. No mm-hmm. Angry Mortgage on TikTok. There is Ron Mortgage Guy on TikTok. Yes, exciting stuff. I think the reveal of the Tiff Macklin puppet might be on tiktok eventually but yeah anyway. they've got to tune in they've they got, got to tune subscribe. in if they want to see uh <laughs> tiff uh, uh in a special guest appearance puppet form <laughs> 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 i guess sure, i'm gonna get in trouble for this uh, anyway. uh, uh so it, it, and it, it, we've been talking about this for for a long long time mm-hmm. for, but suddenly the mayor of brampton patrick brown mm-hmm. ha, like uh, lots of stories about Patrick Brown. But anyway, he's the <laughs> mayor of Brampton, Patrick Brown. Yeah. Incredibly discovered, mm-hmm. discovered a house in Brampton with 25 international students crammed into in a basement. basement. Right? Yeah, yeah. In a basement, okay? <laughs> like, oh, my God. I, I feel so bad for them. I feel so bad for them. Because, like, how do you... <laughs> how, how, how do you live in 25 yeah. in a... Like, yeah. you sleep standing up? I don't know. How do you, do you sleep in shifts? Like they're hooked on the wall. I don't know. <laughs> hooked up. Okay, like, it's and sad. that's a busy bathroom. I think there's only one bathroom in that oh, basement. Uh, that is busy. Uh, that no. is so busy. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, probably, I, no. I, I would. I would suspect all the grass is dead in the, in the backyard. But anyway, that's another. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, sometimes you can't wait. You know, you oh, gotta go in the mornings oh, when you wake up. But anyway, that's uh, Yes, Patrick Brown discovered this. He was shocked. I am shocked. Look at that. Says, Disbelief. Back by bylaw officers brought me this amazing fact. Okay, like sweet Jesus, it's been going on, Patrick, for a little while now. Okay, but yeah, yeah one more piece of evidence that. We do a lot of wrong things. I'll talk about that in a minute uh, at the end of the show, but we do a lot of wrong things with immigration in this country, like a lot. Okay. Yeah. I feel like one of the issues as well is like, for example, with schooling, if they were to come at least with guaranteed housing, we wouldn't be in this issue. Well, also, yeah. if schools like post-secondary was properly funded, then we wouldn't be depending on you know, extorting domestic um, international students. By the way, that's exactly true. It's well said because it's a version of extortion when you're when you're charging people four times. Yeah. But how about this? You're charging people four times for a ridiculous degree. You know, travel business management out of the a one year certificate or something, oh, and it's like twenty five grand. It's like come you know, on. It's all wrong. It's all yeah. wrong. and we know it's all wrong now. It's become obvious. It's all wrong. Mm-hmm. A couple of news flashes. Um, Canadian GDP up. We thought it would be down. It's up. But as I've said maybe a hundred times, and a lot of other smart people have said, if you bring 2.3 million people in in the course of 28 months, yeah, your GDP will go up. Yeah. Because people got to got to eat, got to sleep somewhere. They need transportation. And your gross domestic product will... If, you, if you're increasing your population yeah, 6% in 22 months, you're going to... GDP should have been up a little bit more than very little. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it was up 0.3. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, and uh, U.S. jobs report continues to shock everybody, shock the world. U.S. jobs reports just keeps going and going. Beats <laughs> estimates by double again. Oh, my God. Um, you know, there's something, they, they have a thing going on down there they call the Inflation Reduction Act, which is just basically, they call it Bidenomics. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically, it's just pouring money out to um, develop green energy, mm-hmm. which beats the shit out of the carbon tax, okay? Mm-hmm. That idea is pretty good, but develop green energy and also um, to do, to, you know, infrastructure, you know, highways, uh, improve the infrastructure in the country, and that, that creates a lot of jobs, mm-hmm. okay? And so you get a good jobs report. And it's also the U.S. economy is really still the, the top economy in the world. It's just as simple as that. Yeah. All right. So we come to the answer bag, which I, it's mm. kind of, we should really call it viewer mail, right? We should call it viewer, viewer mail. Viewer questions. Viewer questions. Viewer oh, mail. Yeah. We got, People we got ask questions. us things. We respond. By the way, yes. If you <laughs> leave questions in the comments, we will probably get to it next show. So yeah, yeah. feel free. Okay. Let's we did right get one of those today. It was a little odd, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, this one says, I hear about monolines. What is that? Are these shadow banks? Okay, so we're not supposed to call them monolines anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should, we're supposed to call them mortgage financing corporations. Okay, mm-hmm. so but monolines is it, it's a large financial institution mm-hmm. that works mainly with um, money that's securitized using the can, 
Canada Mortgage Bond and other uh, mortgage products. It essentially, we called, they were called monolines because all they did was mortgages. Mm. Not, you're a bank, you're doing a lot of other stuff, right? Yeah, you got yeah. checking accounts, you got personal loans, line of you credit, got credit cards, yeah. line of credits, you're all doing fun stuff. Oh, you got some of them have insurance. My, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got insurance. Yeah, you got insurance through I, my bank. I, I, sure, they got insurance, <laughs> uh, TD Insurance. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a good company, by the way. Uh, so we got um, uh, uh, wealth management, RSPs, they do, uh, they do everything. Everything, okay. yeah. So Monoline only does mortgages. Mm-hmm. So the idea that, original idea of the Monoline was this that they could do mortgages more cheaply, in other words, a better rate to the consumer, mm-hmm. through mortgage brokers, because that's all they did. They right. didn't know anything else. So they just refined, refined, refined systems, refined, refined, refined. They were sort of the original uh, fin- fintechs, the original mm-hmm. financial technology companies. Mm-hmm. They were the, had the most up-to-date software. And they so that's a mono line. Mm-hmm. So you, like, if you, I guess if we were in China, we might refer to them as shadow banks, but they're not. Uh, these are companies that are, they have a lot of government regulation, actually. So it's yeah. not really sensible to call them monolines. Mm-hmm. They're not licensed as banks, but they work through NHA and CMHC approved channels. Mm. And, you know, the money is securitized and the mortgage is securitized yeah. in that way. So that's what they are. They are just these specialty companies. Great examples would be MCAP, First National, uh, RMG, RFA, CMLS. Mm-hmm. And I say, what is this? Alphabet soup? Time? Hold it, but <laughs> let's face it, guys. The banks are alphabet soup, right? Yeah. <laughs> CIBC, RBC, BMO. I mean, like, come on. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of alphabet soup <laughs> out there. Okay, so like, yes, that's those are those corporations, and they're perfectly great companies. So, mm-hmm. okay, this one says our parents would like to gift us gift us a portion of a, the down payment for our initial home purchase. Is there a maximum percentage that lenders permit for a down payment to be gifted? It's a good question. Um, and, and you know. For those of people lucky enough to get a gift, mm-hmm. uh, it could be whatever. It could be 100% of the down payment. Mm. It could be 100%. There's no limitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be the entire down payment. Mm. That's allowed under every sort of normal bank lending. Uh, mm-hmm. The gift can be the whole down payment. That's it. So no worries there. Good to know. Okay, this one says, why is it so hard to find a home in the GTA with world-class acoustics? It's easier finding a mansion than that if he's unaware of regardless of price too. Okay, so acoustics, all right. In some ways, it's, I, I got to admit, I've never got a question like that before in the mortgage business, but I mean, it, it is kind of an interesting question because it alludes to something else that's important. Um, acoustics are absolutely something that's important to an individual, okay? Mm. So, it's, so yeah, there are no great acoustics available uh, because builders build to a pretty much a cookie cutter standard. Yeah. Okay. You can have a custom home. If you build a custom home, you could pay a lot of attention to acoustics. But at the end of the day, you might not because you don't live in that home for eternity. You're not going to mm-hmm. be in there for 100 years. And when it comes to sell, maybe nobody actually wants those acoustics. Yeah. It's just like the people who have the best possible garden. Yeah. You know, they got the best flower arrangements, the best shrubs, the best everything. When it comes to sell, you know, that, that garden has meant a lot to those people who did it. Mm-hmm. It was an award-winning garden and probably does not get you one penny, maybe, in, you know, extra Not everyone's cup of, cup of tea, you know. Not everyone's They're cup of tea. They're probably just going to make it a driveway. So acoustics, know? gardens, a bunch of other stuff, big statue like I have in my neighborhood. The guy put up a big statue of the fountain. He's got some Roman god peeing out of the fountain and all this stuff. I mean, yeah. No, That's it's, bougie. It's very bougie. It was very <laughs> bougie. Very bougie. Very bougie. If you, you know, let, let's leave this. Let's leave the peeing gods to Bernini and stuff. Okay, like let's not do this anyway. Yeah. So it's it's very much individual mm-hmm. and doesn't add to the price. Doesn't add to the value of the home. Simple right. as that. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. So talking about international students and immigration, we have come to our favorite part of the show. What the actual fuck? So what? the actual fuck is up with immigration you know mm-hmm. immigration has become a hot topic in canada yeah. for only one reason only one there's not a fucking houses and the houses are batshit crazy prices the okay? only reason why we're complaining is because the, they have nowhere to fucking live and these poor people I, as we've said before in the show but i, I got an, an extra reason i'm mad about it today and, and uh, worked <laughs> up about it these poor people, they are more screwed than the people in Canada who are seeing the prices pushed up mm-hmm. because they have, there are 25 of them in a basement in fucking Brampton, okay? Mm-hmm. Or they come here from another country with hopes of, of doing the best they possibly can. And when they find out the price of houses, they say, well, how am I ever going to, 
Mm-hmm. You know, I love, I, I, they, many of them come here to own homes, right? They come here. 100%. It's hard to own a home in the countries they came from. Yeah. Okay? So they come here and say, well, how the fuck am I ever going to afford this mm-hmm. house? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm sure they come with the hope that they've seen their, you know, aunties and uncles and all that. They came here and they did it fine. Because they did, they came 25 years ago. Exactly. Okay? Yeah, they're, exactly. All, they're hooked on that hope, though. Yeah. And that, right? So I was listening to a, um, everybody, everybody who's interested in long form podcasts about pol- mostly policy, mostly government policy. Okay. There's a great show called The Hurdy Burly. It's a Hurdy Burly podcast, it's on Apple. Spotify, it's everywhere. You can, you, it's easy to find. Hurley Burley. And uh, my friend David Hurley interviews people um, about government policy for a solid hour. So somebody, oh my God, that's boring. Yes, it's boring, but it also makes you think. Mm-hmm. Last week he had on Mark Miller. Mark Miller is the federal government's immigration minister. He's the minister mm-hmm. of immigration, citizenship, refugees, long all these mm-hmm. very long titles now on these <laughs> ministries. But now here's the thing. We like to ridicule uh, everybody in government. That's a favorite habit, particularly on social media these days. Mm-hmm. And I've had my fair share of, I mean, I, I mean, for Christ's sakes, I got a TIFF puppet coming in. Okay, <laughs> so, so yeah, there's ridicule. But here's what I want to, want to tell you. Mark Miller, <clears throat> just like the housing minister, um, Sean Fraser, if anybody doesn't think these are smart people, they are smart. I know there's like 100 comments coming out. No, they're not smart, Ron. They're fucking stupid. No, no, they are actually very intelligent, mm-hmm. very accomplished people mm-hmm. who simply are stuck with the wrong policies. Now, unfortunately, it means they have to go out and promote the wrong policies like they're just happy as hell with mm-hmm. them, okay? The thing that I zeroed in on, and it's a great interview, the, the thing I zeroed in on, again, the people are intelligent, they're hardworking, mm-hmm. and they want to do good for Canada, but they're just completely going down the wrong path, okay? Okay. Um, I listened to it talk about, well, okay, he had a story behind the, they're making some changes to the international students, going to cut it back quite a bit. He mm-hmm. acknowledges a bunch of bullshit going on. The cost, you know, all that kind of still got bullshit. Okay, he acknowledges <laughs> it's all bad, has to be fixed, will be fixed. He's got some, but it's interesting when, when David really tried to pin him down on, hey, is this huge amount of ongoing permanent resident immigration, is there any thought of a just a pause or a tiny, change because it's gone from like 225 250,000 to 500,000 and those those are common like mm-hmm. they're not temporary workers mm-hmm. they're not students they're going to live here forever, forever. okay yeah. and there's not enough houses for them mm-hmm. uh, that's that simple there's just yeah. not enough and it's there's there's by the way again new announcements uh less housing starts again is confirmed in Ontario than anyway it just keeps on getting worse mm-hmm. but NBC uh and He's just oblivious. He says, no, there's a plan. And he gives some very intelligent reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. But they're intelligent, Mm -hmm. but wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the policy is just wrong. Like, you can't... Listen, countries built on immigration. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think my grandparents were immigrants. Your parents were immigrants. Mm -hmm. We love immigrants, for the love of God. Okay? And they're the hardest working people who come. But... Well, is it fair to anybody? Couldn't we just go back to a quarter million for a couple of years, catch up with this goddamn housing, okay? Yeah. As opposed yeah. to... Now, he gave some reasons. I listened to the reasons. You know, there's good demographic reasons. There's lots of, of, of ideas behind it. But you... And you know that, of course, it's the province's fault there are not enough houses. It's the municipality's fault there are not enough houses. But sweet Jesus, there are not enough houses, okay? That's the, That's the it. point. <laughs> That's the point. There's not enough houses, okay? Yeah. So... Please, Mark Miller, sweet Jesus, yes, <laughs> smart guy, able guy, wants to do good. This is all wrong, okay? It's all wrong. We need some sort of tiny pause. We need to catch okay? up. Just let us catch up, okay? Yeah. Please let us catch up. So that's it, folks, for the pod today. I spent a lot of time on bad private mortgage bullshit. Believe me, there's some great companies out there doing private mortgages. If you're invested mm-hmm. in the great companies, I wouldn't worry at all. All right, next week. See ya. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. 
Angry Mortgage could use your support. 